Here is absolutely everything you need to know to become a god at the newest Dead by Daylight killer, the Xenomorph. Xenomorph is a fictional endoparasitoid extraterrestrial ter terrestrial. Xenomorph is a fictional endoparasitoid extraterrestrial species that for some reason has a head shaped like a croissant. What the hell is that? I must admit, I haven't seen a single alien movie, nor have I played any of the alien games, so I'm gonna keep this section brief so I don't spread any misinformation. But, from my research, it seems like this alien species has no other goal than to survive by any means necessary, including the elimination of anyone that poses a risk to them. I'm pretty sure they lay eggs that have face huggers in them, which are these creatures that'll latch onto a host and impregnate them with an alien embryo. Fun fact, you can see one of these face huggers on the new alien map in this window. This alien embryo will eventually burst through the host's chest and turn into the guy from Fortnite. Before I teach you how to play Xeno, I need to show you something. More than 80 million downloads, almost a perfect rating from 400,000 reviews on the iOS App Store alone. Raid Shadow Legends, a free-to-play action RPG with extensive PvE and PvP gameplay. Raid is genuinely the most detailed mobile game that I have seen. The graphics and amount of stuff you can do is really impressive for something that runs on your phone. My favorite part about Raid was just looking through all the characters. There are over 700 completely unique characters with different abilities. I'll show you a few of my personal favorites on screen now. I'm just saying, whoever the character designers are, they should get a raise because these are insanely cool. You can use these characters to fight enemies, including many bosses like the Hydra boss that has different types of heads with unique attacks. For example, the Head of Suffering can take some of the damage you attack it with and send it right back to you. The Head of Decay will make your team lose maximum health every time you heal, and the Head of Mischief can steal any buffs that you have on your fully buffed up champion and give it to the other heads. If you want to make this fight easier, you can get a free legendary champion by logging into Raid on seven different days between now and October 23rd. If you're a completely new player, I have some free loot for you. Use the promo skin JT skin in game before October 7th to unlock one of the best epic champions, the Stag Knight, as well as a skin for him. You can also get a completely free starter pack with this awesome loot if you click on the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen. Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Xenomorph's power may look complex based on the entire Bible that is written here, but it's actually very simple to understand. You have two different modes. Normal mode, where you're just a regular killer with a regular terror radius, and Nemesis. <coughs> Sorry. And Runner mode, which automatically activates when your power meter fills up. In Runner mode, you can crawl on all fours and your terror radius is reduced to 24 meters, and you gain the ability to strike people with a tail. This is very similar to the tentacle strike from Nemesis, but it's way harder to understand, especially for a noob like you. Here's a good visualization of the hitbox. Supposedly, you have a very small window to quickly look up or down to extend the hitbox, kind of like how you can quickly look left or right to extend the hitbox on Nemesis. Keep in mind that your tail attack is just barely shorter than the tier 1 Nemesis tentacle strike, so you don't really get a lot of distance with this. And finally, the absolute best ability for this killer, tunneling. This tunnel system is extremely important, and using it properly will be the sole difference between a strong Xeno and a little baby Xeno like you. You can walk up to these boxes around the map and go into a tunnel system. By pressing control on any of the boxes, it highlights it in yellow, which just creates a waypoint marker showing you the fastest route to get to that exit. While you're in the tunnel, you can manually move to wherever you want and exit wherever you want. There's also no cooldown for this, so you can tunnel without a second thought. Crazy how many similarities this killer has with Nemesis. These tunnels recharge your runner mode significantly faster, which you will be needing to do because the survivors can now fight back. You heard me. Remember those boxes from earlier? Well, these contain literal flame turrets that'll burn you if you get too close to them. As they burn you, your power meter will fill up with red, and if it fills up all the way, it'll kick you out of runner mode. But luckily for you, you won't have to hear California girls after you get knocked out of your power. You can destroy turrets by hitting them normally or hitting them with your tail. Unfortunately, you'll most likely be kicked out of runner mode before you even have time to react, but there are some add-ons to help mitigate this issue that I'll talk about later. The Xenomorph can be a powerful killer in the right hands, but he doesn't have enough strengths to compete with top tier killers like Nurse and Blight. However, you need to take advantage of these strengths to do well with this killer. Traversability. Since you can teleport around the map wherever you want, it's very easy to keep up map pressure and patrol gens or other objectives. Stealth. Although not incredible, you do technically have some built-in stealth since your terror radius gets reduced and you get low to the ground while in runner mode. If you pair this with stealth perks, you might be able to catch some survivors off guard. Sounds. One of the best part of your teleporting ability is the fact that you can hear things that are happening above ground. You can go to 
to different generators and hear which ones are being worked on while the survivors have no idea that you're there, and it's a great way to understand where you may need to patrol when above ground. Anti-loop. Although not amazing by any means, your tail attack can still hit survivors from much further away and can hit them through pallets or windows. Once you get used to the jank, you'll be able to shut down many small loops. Exit gates. Your tunnels make it very easy to patrol exit gates that may be far away, making it very difficult for the last survivor to escape. Footsteps. When you're in your tunnels, you can see the survivor's footsteps if you're underneath them. Hatch. You might be able to hear the hatch while you're in your tunnels, but I haven't confirmed if this is true yet. Perk synergies. There are many perks that pair really well with this killer. Here are a few that I think are pretty solid. Discordance. Since tunnels usually exit in your generators, barbecue and chili to get info on where you should teleport after hooking a survivor. Bamboozle. Since he's somewhat weak in chase, and since there's an add-on that increases his vault speed while in runner mode. Dragon's Grip. Because you can trap a gen and then sit in the tunnel directly underneath it. Enduring. To help you in chases. Fear Fury. If you're using Enduring. Fearmonger. To prevent survivors from running away when you teleport to their gen. Gearhead. For info on where you should teleport. Hex Plaything and Hex Pentimento. Because you can teleport to broken totems very quickly to activate Pentimento. Jolt. Because you'll probably be near progress generators a lot since you can teleport to them. Lethal Pursuer. Since you can start a chase almost immediately when the game starts because of your tunnels. Make your choice because you can return to the hook very easily to take advantage of the exposed survivor. Merciless Storm. To force them off gens with your teleport. Tinkerer. For infos on the gens to teleport to. Monitor and Abuse. To make your runner mode have a 16 meter terror radius. No way out. Since you can take advantage of the notification when they touch the door because of your teleport ability. Pop goes the weasel since you can get to highly progressed gens quickly. Skur trick floods of rage to keep up your quick map pressure. Surveillance for the same reason. Dwelling tremors for the same reason. And trail of torment because you can activate stealth almost whenever you want and then appear on the complete opposite side of the map from where you just kicked a gen. Since this killer is relatively basic, there are many weaknesses that you should be aware of. Tight loops. On a lot of the loops that are more rounded than square, there is almost no way that you can physically use your tail attack unless you're very close to the survivor. So you'll have to get rid of these pallets as soon as you can to prevent survivors from looping you there. Fire. I obviously had to mention this because the turrets will force you to return to your tunnels to get your power back, and it can be very detrimental if you constantly get hit with them. Janky hitboxes. Your tail attack is very, very confusing on what hits and what doesn't, and hopefully when the killer is fully released, there will be more visual clarity. The current survivor meta that apparently most people don't see a problem with. Right now, there's a lot of very good survivor perks that mostly help in chase, and this killer already kind of has a weakness in chase. Perks like Made for This and Resilience on top of the new fast fall changes will make it really difficult for you to down survivors if you can't use your tail attack. Unlike his counterpart, Xenomorph's add-ons have a surprising amount of unique utility that can fit a ton of different playstyles. Here are a few that I think will be strong or fun to use. My favorite add-on is Self-Destruct Bolt, which increases vaulting speed by 30% when in runner mode. This add-on is unbelievably fun to pair with Bamboozle, Superior Anatomy, and Fire Up to get up to a 99% faster vault speed. This means that you can vault over a window in an eighth of a second. It's insane. His best eerie add-on is called Acidic Blood. If a survivor stuns you within 20 seconds after you exit a Funnel, it'll injure them, and if they're already injured, they'll become deep wounded. Since you should be teleporting and pressuring gens a lot, you'll be able to get a ton of value out of this add-on, especially if you pair it with the next add-on, Parker's Headband, which grants you a 5% haste for 3 seconds when exiting a tunnel. Improvised Cattle Prod isn't as good as his other Eerie, but it can still be somewhat useful. Whenever a gen is complete, this add-on activates for 15 seconds. Any survivors that get within 10 meters of your tunnels will have their auras revealed for an entire 15 seconds, which is quite a long time. Harpoon Gun can be a great information tool to keep consistent map pressure. If you hit a survivor within 10 seconds of exiting a tunnel, all survivors further than 24 meters away from you will scream. Again, pair this with Parker's headband to help you secure that hit. Kane's helmet. Survivors that hit you with their tail become mangled, which is good for some additional slowdown. Most of his yellow and brown add-ons affect turrets and are unironically some of his best add-ons. Emergency helmet increases the resistance to staggering by turrets, which is extremely good because it gives you more time to break the turret before it, well, breaks you. Lambert's star map decreases the flame distance of turrets by two meters, so it has a similar effect to giving you more time to see the turret before you get kicked out of your power. If you pair both of these add-ons together, turrets will probably feel like an afterthought. Then he has a couple of good brown add-ons like Ripley's Watch, which destroys any turret that removes you from runner mode, and Ovomorph, which recharges your runner mode 25% faster when outside of a tunnel. Xenomorph's three teachable perks are honestly not amazing. They're not terrible, but I doubt they'll be meta. His best perk, in my opinion, is Rapid Brutality, which gives you a 5% haste for 10 seconds when you hit a survivor, but you can no longer gain bloodlust. This can help you reduce the distance a survivor gains after you hit them, which can be huge, especially if you pair this with Save the Best for Last. His next perk would probably go to Ultimate Weapon. When you open a locker, this perk activates for 30 seconds. If a survivor enters your terror radius within those 30 seconds, they will scream and suffer from blindness for 30 seconds. The blindness is really weird, and I kind of feel like it should be 
oblivious instead. But regardless, this perk can help you find nearby survivors easily, which is extremely helpful, especially in situations where you know that someone is nearby, but you don't know exactly where. The downside to this perk though, is that double story maps like Gideon Meat Plant might waste a lot of this perk's value. The Xenomorph's last teachable perk is called Alien Instinct and is essentially just a worse barbecue and chili. When you hook a survivor, the aura of the furthest survivor is revealed to you for five seconds and they suffer from the oblivious status effect for 20 seconds. This can definitely be good on killers that have high mobility that can actually take advantage of the oblivious, but on other killers, I feel like barbecue is just objectively better since you can get more information from it. If you watched till the end, drop a like and comment an alien emoji down below. If you want to learn one tip for every single survivor perk in Dead Bedelic, come check out this video here.